guys, it's Dana from MadeEveryday.com. And today I have a really simple project for you. It's great for beginners. We're gonna sew a little pair of loungy pajama pants with taco trucks. I love projects that come together quickly and that my kids will get tons of use from. And a pair of pajama pants or shorts, well, it doesn't get much simpler than that. They have an elastic waistband which makes them really cozy and they're made from soft flannel and with so many cute flannel prints at the store, I mean, I just wanna make pair after pair after pair. You know how it goes. Here's what you need. Some cute fabric and one inch wide elastic. For a pair of kids' pajama pants or shorts, you only need about a yard or two of fabric. And the great thing about using flannel, aside from the fact that it's super soft and cozy and snuggly, is that there are so many cute prints available out there. I mean, look at all of these designs. I got them all at my local Joanne Fabric and Craft Store, and they have bolts and bolts of the cutest little things. I just wanna buy all of it. And when it goes on sale, sometimes I buy two or three yards of a print, even though I don't even know what I'm gonna make with it. I bring it home, I wash it, I dry it, and then it's all ready to go when I'm ready to sew. So let's set your fabric aside and we'll talk about a pattern. I've shown you how to make a basic pair of shorts before, but as with any sewing project, there is always more than one way to sew something. And that's what I wanna show you right now. I am using my kid shorts pattern, which is available on my website, go to madeeveryday.com. And you don't have to use this pattern, you can use your own or you can make your own. And typically, in a pants or shorts pattern, there is a front and a back, which is great if you wanna have a side seam for a pocket. But sometimes you can also find patterns that are together, where it just makes one large pattern piece. And that is great if you have a fabric where you don't wanna cut into the print, you really wanna maximize how that fabric looks and so that it kind of bends around the leg and it looks kind of cozy and cute. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm gonna take these two pieces and combine them together. And I've already cut my piece out here, but let me explain kind of what I did. I took a large piece of paper, or you can take together a bunch of smaller pieces of paper, which is my go-to method. That's what I do every time I'm making a pattern, because I always have paper. I'm gonna take these two pattern pieces, place them together with the side seams touching, and then because these are PJ pants, I want them to be extra roomy, so I'm actually gonna give them more space. I'm keeping the side seams so that they are even with each other, but I'm adding a little bit of space in the middle. There we go. And then I'm also adding a little bit more room at the top just to make it again more roomy. And then I'm adding more length because I want them to be pants. And to figure out the length, you can measure your child's inseam, you can grab a pair of pants they already have, or you can just make them extra long, try them on, and then you'll know how to hem them. Okay, let's cut out our fabric. Okay, I've got my fabric here. And you guys, this print, when I saw it at Joanne, well, I bought the rest of the bolt because, you know, taco trucks, donut trucks, flowers, ah. Okay, it's folded in half so that I'm going to cut two pieces for my pants. And you can have them right sides together or wrong sides together, it doesn't really matter, but you want the pieces to be mirror images of each other. So I'm taking my pattern piece and laying it right on top. I have the top up here and the bottom down here, so it's going the right direction. And this is great for this size, four to five. I can fit both legs. If you had a larger size, you might need to open up your fabric and cut one piece, move down and cut the other piece. But for little kids, this 44 inch wide works perfect. Okay, then just take your scissors and start cutting. Okay, I am done cutting my fabric. Now before we sew, I wanna show you a quick tip that I love to do because it helps save time later and it's easier to press things when they're flat than when they're sewn around a little leg. So first we're gonna hem the bottom of the pants under. And if you're not sure what length you're gonna to wanna to do, you can save this step till later, no big deal. I'm starting by folding it under about a half inch, or you could do a quarter inch. There's no right or wrong with this. Press that under, that just is going to keep the raw edge inside the hem. And then do it about another, I don't know, one inch? It depends on what kind of look you're going for. Sometimes I kind of like a more chunky hem on these pajama pants, it just looks really cute. The other thing is if you do a chunky hem, if you cut them a little extra long, then as your child grows, you could let the hem out. Of course, by the time they grow, then it's ready for summer and then I snip them off and make them into shorts. <laughs> okay, so there's one. Let's do the other one. Okay, after we've done that, now we wanna do the top casing, which is, well, kind of a similar look. This is where the elastic is gonna go through the top of our pajama pants. So first go over about a quarter to a half of an inch. And 
then we want to go over about another hmm, one and a quarter inches or one and a half. I have a little ruler here. You just want to make sure if I grab my elastic that it's wide enough for our elastic to go through. So let's see. I did about one and a half inches is good. Press that in place, give it a really good firm press. And we'll do the other pant. Okay, now we wanna pin the legs together and then we're headed to our machine. Now unfold those areas that we just pressed, which I know sounds kinda of weird, but I promise it's gonna help later. We're gonna take this leg with right sides together and match it up at the top of the inseam or the crotch area. And what we're going to do in this step is to sew right down the inseam, down to the bottom of the hem. I'm gonna pin it in a couple places. And let's go to our machine. Okay, I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you always wanna do a forward and back stitch at the beginning of your project. It's just kind of ties a knot and keeps the thread from coming and done. Then just go all the way around. This is your first project you've ever made. This is a great place to start. We'll teach you some basics of sewing garments without having to worry if it fits exactly perfect. Do a back stitch. And then let's do the other leg. Forward and back stitch at the end. We're done. And we're not even gonna press anything this time. I know I'm always talking about pressing, but this next step is just so fast. Turn one of your legs right side out, and then we're gonna stick it right inside the other leg. So, stick it in there. And then you wanna match them up right here where these two little crotch seams come together. And I'm gonna place a pin right there. And then, just wanna match it up, the two pieces around like this. Okay, now you can see here, we're going to sew from one side, down around, and back up the other side. I'm using the same seam allowance here, a 3 8 inch. Forward and back stitch. And then just go right around. When you get to the spot where the two inseams come together, just kind of do your best to lay it flat and to go through all those layers at once. There we go. Do a back stitch. And let's see how our pants are looking so far. If we pull the whole thing out, we're gonna be amazed at how quickly these come together. I mean, they're basically pants already, right? Okay, let's see. Ah, awesome, I love it. Okay, now I wanna create the casing for the top that the elastic is gonna go through. And this is why we pressed it earlier, because it's so easy to just fold under and fold under again, and then just put a little pin there. If you can't see your creases anymore, just grab your iron and press it again, but it should fold over pretty easily. I'm pinning it all the way around. And then it's important, you want to leave an opening in the back for the elastic to get in and out. So, if you think you might forget to stop, Sometimes I like to place two pins so that I remember, oh yeah, this is my opening. You just need to leave about, I don't know, two or three inches, nothing big. Now let's pin our hem as well. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm folding under, and then I'm folding under again. And I'm gonna just place a few pins, and then we'll go back to our machine. I'm gonna sew the hem of the pants first, which I know sounds a little backward, but there's no real right or wrong way here. I'm using about a 1 8 inch seam allowance, which means I'm just a smidgen over from the folded edge. I'm gonna do a forward and back stitch. And then I'm just going right around. Now again, if you're not sure the length for your child, you might save this step till the very end. And sew the waist first and try them on your child and then you'll know for sure. But as I said, I've made these many, many times for my kids which makes this project so simple. Once you have your pattern ready to go and you know all the lengths and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you can churn these things out for Christmas, birthdays, anytime. Do back stitch at the end. And then let's do the other leg.
Okay, backstitch. Okay, now let's sew the top casing. Go back to our waist. And remember that I have my start and stop point here. So I want to leave that opening for the elastic. So start right there. Again, I'm using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Pour in a backstitch. And then just go all the way around. Okay, I'm getting to my stop point here. Do a forward and back stitch. And now we're ready to string our elastic through. I'm using one inch wide elastic, which you can also find at Joanne, and they sell it by the yard or in these little pre-cut packages. And I like to buy knit elastic rather than woven or braided. I just feel like it stands up straighter and stretches really great. Now the length for your elastic is going to be your waist plus an extra inch so that you can overlap the two ends. So for my little daughter, Clara, who is actually turning five, I'm gonna cut this 21 inches as her waist, so I'll do 22. Okay, just like that. Set this aside. Now you wanna take a safety pin or a bodkin if you have one of those. Safety pins work great. Stick it through the end. And then we're gonna string this through the little casing that we made. So find the opening right there. Stick it in. And then we just wanna push it all the way through. You wanna make sure that your elastic is not getting twisted inside as you go. If it does, no big deal. You just pull it out and do it again. Look, already getting twisted. Okay. Kind of flatten it, and then what you wanna do is secure the other end so that as you're going, your whole elastic doesn't just pull right through. With pajama pants, it's less likely because you're not gathering as much fabric as say like a simple skirt. With a skirt, for sure you gotta do that. Otherwise, you're doing this again and again. And then wait till it comes back out the other end. There it is. Pull that through. Okay, shimmy this around. Okay. And then, if you have the convenience of trying this on your child, I like to actually just safety pin these two ends together before I sew everything together and make sure that it fits right, that maybe it's too loose or maybe it's too tight. If it's too tight, just cut another little piece of elastic, sew it to the end, and then you can have an extra long piece. Or you could start over and string a new piece through. Either way. So, I would pin it like that, kind of go like this, try it on my child, but we're gonna go to our machine and sew it together. Take the two ends of your elastic and overlap them about one inch, and then come to your machine. And we're gonna sew it in place just with a couple stitches. Well, a couple lines of stitches. Forward and back. And you could use a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. Press one, then just scoot over and sew another one. You don't have to, I just feel like, I like things to be secure inside of here. Okay, elastic is good. Let's see how it looks. Looking awesome. Okay, now we just need to sew the casing closed. So come right back to your machine, fold over that area, and we're gonna sew right along this little opening right there. Let's go back to your machine, and just start at the same spot that you stopped at before. Try to match it up the stitch line. Forward and back stitch. Make sure you're not sewing any of the elastic. And sew right down. And you are done with your cute little pajama pants. But let me show you one more fun addition. I like to add a little faux drawstring or tie at the top. Again, it's purely accessory, but it looks really cute. So you can also find some fun trims at Joanne and they have awesome cotton twill tape, which I like to use, white or colored. Or sometimes when I'm working with knit fabrics, I like to cut the selvage edge or just a strip of fabric and you yank it and it creates kind of like a little tube of fabric. And that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna cut about, oh, I don't know, 24 inches. I like to do about 12 inches for each side of the little tie. So I'll cut a string right here. Perfect. The nice thing about knit fabrics is they don't fray, so you don't have to finish off the edges, anything like that. And then I'm gonna start in the middle of the top casing, and I'm gonna sew, make sure these are even. I'm gonna lay it like that and just sew one little line down there. 
so simple. Or faux simple. <laughs> okay, go to your machine. And just do a little board of backstitch. That's all you need. And there you go. Let's tie a little bow and then let's see how it looks. Oh, perfect. If it's too long, just cut the ends a little bit. And look at that. Congratulations. You just made a pair of pajama pants. Your kids are going to be thrilled. In fact, I'm going to go try this on my daughter, Clara, right now. For more ideas and tutorials, visit my website, madeeveryday.com. And for flannel, elastic, and other needs, head to your local Joanne store or go to joanne.com. I'll see you next time. Bye.